Heritage Conservation Commission on January 31st, 2024. And we have two items on the agenda. One is um, responding to Coupop about four of the properties that they're reviewing, us giving our input, and the other is to explore the possibilities of doing uh, grants involving money that the Connecticut has given for trail maintenance and development. So with that, I think we'll go with the coupon first, and Diana, you've created some letters that you're interested in sharing with us so that okay. we can um, respond to those. Sure. So based on the meeting that the Conservation Commission had in December, we looked at a few properties that were requested by Coupop for our recommendations to submit as they were reviewing them for their use and whether or not they should change or maintain with the uses of those properties. <clears throat> These are properties that are undeveloped and owned by the town. So um, we looked at three proper, uh, yeah, three. One was 31 Enoch Drive, which um, is referenced in the Greenway plan that we already have. Um, so based on the recommendations we put in the Greenway plan um, and based on our review of the property and from what we gathered from Enoch, uh, excuse me, from Kupa, from Nicole when she spoke, was that there was an interested party who wanted to purchase it to um, increase their parcel with a conservation easement on it because we already have trails on there so we would always have access to our trails and I believe there was another element of um, no trees on the property would be cut the I can I can yeah, fill please. you in on this um, back in 19 no 2017 the same party was interested in purchasing this, as, as is interested now. Um, and they went through conservation, and they went through everybody, and they negotiated about it, and it was dropped, probably <coughs> because they could not come to an agreement. And at that point in time, the Conservation Commission recommended that they found it was fine to sell it, but with three restrictions. Um, one was that there be a minimum of 50 foot buffer on the trail because they said they had all kinds of experience with trails before and smaller um, buffers, smaller widths, and got into all kinds of trouble as far as these easements were concerned. People dumped their, you know, dogs went into private property, people dumped um, <coughs> leaves on the trails, you know, all these kinds of things, lots of different things. That was one condition. The second condition was that there would be a permanent easement put on the property, uh, on the trails, or the trail in this case. Um, and third, that the proceeds from the sale of the property would go into the open space fund. They found out subsequently that is not necessarily possible. And I'm not sure whether it's changed since then or not, but at that point in time, it, they, they couldn't guarantee that. The, the funds go into the general fund and they couldn't guarantee that it would go over. Um, as I said, it was negotiated and it was, uh, uh, for some reason, it never came up again. It. it never went through, etc. The, the owner is, again, the same owner, contiguous to the property, is, um, would, has said that they were interested in purchasing it again. Um, they are, the, the trail, and, and this is a little bit confusing, but apparently the trail goes as it is now goes right along the edge of the property of the owner and this piece of the townhomes. They have discussed over and over of moving the trail to the center of the property. Um, but still in all, there is a case of having an easement on this trail for an easement. Now, in addition, a very fascinating fact, um, they researched all the deeds on the property. 
and the deeds going back uh, at least to 1939 have restrictions in them, a lot of restrictions, but the, the one that would be most appropriate for us is that they nobody can cut down any trees. Um, so in, in a sense, and the deed, and now those restrictions have been passed down to the present deed that the town owns. So there, there is restriction on it already. It would be very difficult to do much of anything. You can't cut down the trees. On the other hand, somebody could go in and cut down the trees and say, I didn't know it, and they're gone. Um, so that's that's the, the conditions that, that, and I'm not sure, I, uh, the meeting I attended at Kupak, it was not, didn't have a quorum, so they took no votes. So I really simply got information from them. At the same time, they gave some information. There were also some, um, they asked Jason to come in and talk to them about it, which he did. He's the one that gave, explained what the original restrictions and, and, and the original um, Conservation Commission had, had put those restrictions in their agreement that they could be sold. Um, he also mentioned which I think is of interest, um, that the value is very, very low anyway of a piece of property. Um, it, so what are they going to do with this money? What, what good is it going to do for the town to sell it? Um, it's much easier to maintain the easements, et cetera, and the trails that it's town owned than it's, than it's not. Um, in addition, it was mentioned that, of course, all these sales went through without any um, easements, and maybe it would be a good idea to get an easement put on, the town, on, on that piece of property if it doesn't sell, or, you know, one way or the other, either way. Um, so, and Kathy Wick also mentioned several things about it. Um, one thing that was interesting, uh, I mean, they really researched this. It was originally purchased for trails and open space and green space. Oh. And apparently at one of the meetings, Tim brought up the fact that if it was purchased for that, isn't it restricted still? And and they researched it and found out that it was restricted as long as the debt was being paid for, but after it was completely paid, all the restrictions <coughs> go away. This is just this is what they were told. And it was completely paid in, uh, I think, uh, 2018. 2018. 18, thank you. Oh. Um, so there are, no, you don't have restrictions on them in that sense <coughs> on, on the property. But the town, excuse me, just one more thing I just wanted to emphasize. According to Kathy, this property was purchased by the town for open space, and the town voted on it. It wasn't just the it wasn't just the the selectmen that voted to do this. The, the town people, oh, the entire town, yeah. voted on this at the time. Mm -hmm. It was done in 1999. That's when it was purchased. Mm -hmm. And um, and Kathy mentioned the fact that you know if the town people wanted this restricted, it would be a terrible. Um, change for the for them to turn around and unrestrict it again. So hmm. at the moment, it's still. And the other other part of Enoch Drive, the 25, is or it has an easement. <coughs> There's no question about that. Okay, I think that's the other thing that I think that was mentioned too. Not to interrupt you, that Nicole mentioned that they would invite the trail master in to talk a little bit more about the property. And what the options are about possibly moving it. Um, so I think that's going to be TBD, right? Yeah. I think that's going to be scheduled. And he's going to be at the, at, the, at the special meeting they're having on the yeah. 6th. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Along with the land trust. He's going to talk oh. about Okay. That's. Can you attend the special meeting on the 6th? <laughs> <laughs> time, time to pass it on to I think, Rachel. No. <laughs> I think I think Sharon and I are both quite divided, but I could go from okay. six to seven. But I'd rather have someone else who could go for the whole thing. I could go in addition to that. But I'm not sure. Okay. 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 Okay
or six to a little before seven. I have a question about that restriction. You said it was on the mortgage. It was on the deed. On the deed. So the deed. Oops. It's on the deed that it will cease it's when the mortgage on. is paid off. Is that what you said? Oh no 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 no. The restriction on the deed for the for the trees. No, for the Enoch. You said that there was a restriction on it. Oh, it was purchased it. by town uh, funds by the town, and, and it was apparently, I guess you would say mortgage, I can't imagine. They bonded the money. They bonded it. Yeah. And so, oh. they, the, while they were paying the bond back, it was still considered open space, can't touch it. But once the bond was paid, can do rules. Well, once it, 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 it rules this. Well, the bond and not a mortgage. No, okay. Yeah, yeah right. That's so we prepared a letter before we knew some of this information. Are you updating it to reflect that? That <laughs> quickly. Um, doing the latest. Um, so what I'll, what, basically what, what we wrote, and I don't want to read it all and bore everybody. So some of the letter that we wrote for the recommendation for the property at 31 Enoch um, covers like the, the write-up we have about it in, um, the Greenway plan that we revised. Um, it was purchased by the town um, to provide parking for safe and ready access to the Greenway Trail, also to extend the conti contiguous open space area on the eastern side of Brown Hill, as noted in the plan. So the plan goes into, it's got some more bullet points in there about the property, which I think we should include. In addition to you know, if, if we agree with the recommendations that the commission had um, suggested or placed on the purchase earlier, I think, you know, we can, we can include those as well if we agree with them. The minimum buffer of 50 feet on all sides of the trail, the permanent easement, conservation easement on the property, the funds from the sale being placed into a special fund for, con was it conservation purposes or conservation acquisition? I think it, it's open space. Open space acquisition. 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 Thank you. Um, and then the restriction on the trees not to be removed and anything else that we want to add. That, that remain in the deed if it were to be sold. So they can't. They can't do. They can't remove the trees, regardless, because it remains in the deed. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, and if I might interrupt here, this whole thing about the parking. <laughs> Nobody can figure out where it would be parking because if it would be down on Amity Road that we as we saw um, the, the, the land goes straight up like that um, so how you, you'd have to dig out the, the bank to make, make any parking at all and at the top of the hill um, there's really sort of no access so yeah. or how where this parking would have been nobody can figure out it's not specified, and nobody knows. Just as, as a note. Mm. But it was in part of the For dirt bikes only. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they, they don't put the oh, mountain bikes. That's it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they don't park anyway. They just go. And I've talked more <laughs> than I go. should, but I, you summarized it really well. And I watched the replay the other day, but it sounds like it's so rocky and so steep. You can't do it's anything with it anyway. Mm. Where they would put parking, to your point, no idea after seeing that area. And, you know, our former commission, commission colleague had said, it's going to put a dent in the greenway. If you give it up, it's going to be hard right, to get back. Right, that's another thing. So, you know, if you, that's something that so, Jason mentioned, that it's Jason. going to, it's going to be, it's going to get chunk out of the greenway that we're trying so hard to build so do around have, town. Do you, have, do you have any insight on to why the owner wants to buy it? I mean, I could, yeah, I could see wanting to buy an adjacent property so that nobody develops on it, but it sounds like there's so many restrictions that nobody's going to develop on it anyway. So, um, like, well, I don't know if the owner mentioned what they wanted to, to do. And is there a price tag that is determined? I have no idea. I mean, I, I, it's never come up. If if they were to merge multiple parcels, does that deed restriction continue on if it becomes would they I all would fall think, under one deed? I don't, mm -hmm. Uh uh. 
No. Yeah. So it should be remain that for that person, regardless if now we're talking about it. As far as I know, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but as far as I know. No, but I agree. What is the benefit to the to the buyer, buyer Nobody if seems they to have know. all these restrictions? And when Nobody you say, seems to know why well, they want to buy it again. Right. And, it doesn't seem course, like there's... It seems like they already are getting the benefit without having to pay for it, so why right. not keep it the way... Especially if they have to commit to open space, then they can't be sell that. Right. That's the other thing. They well, shouldn't the have house either. is way up and down, too. Yeah. So. But as the trail, I mean, it, it might be because they don't want the trail going to the Right, so that's why that's, that would defeat a purpose. Yeah. Well, to be it could well, stop. Right. And that, of course, would, would put a big hole in the whole greenway system. Yeah. And okay. the one last thing I'll say is there was one thing that Nicole brought up that the town does have a responsibility as part of like an association in that neighborhood to do snow removal and, mm -hmm. and there's like some sort of cost every year in the area of fifteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why they're kind of taking a closer look at it. But, but I thought they did it it. Snow that I thought they were a part of the whole anyway to clear the roads. They so. had been yeah, whether point. they ever got out of it I don't know. That's something we have to ask. I thought they weren't a part of the homeowners they association. Had been. So where does this leave us in terms of getting a recommendation to go yes. up by the 6th? Can we get a, a, can we get a consensus or preliminary one to see where we're at here? Sure. So, um, <laughs> uh, <proposed laughs> thing. um uh, does anybody, I guess, all those, uh, just you know, polling the audience here while we're talking about it, um, all those in favor of Keeping, keeping the property under the town ownership. Given the deed restrictions, given the fact that it's a key part of the greenway, given that it's, um, you know, uh, it already has a deed restriction on the trees. It seems like that supports, it. and the fact that the town, people of the town wanted that, that seems mm -hmm. like a really a thing to respect because. Otherwise, anything we get a town vote on can be nullified the mm -hmm. same way this can. And so mm -hmm. I think those are enough reasons that we should recommend that the town. Do, are we, so is everybody in favor of recommending that the town? I second. I second. Okay. So I'm going to need a real motion here <laughs> to make write something down. Um, here's Kathy. <laughs> I so move that we recommend to the town that they continue to own 31 Enoch Drive for the low purposes. One that the town people voted and bought it for the purpose of open space. Second, that it's a key greenway, part of the greenway that we're so carefully trying to develop and that it's a habitat for animals and recreation for the town. And is it kind of, that's my recommendation. Okay. Um, does anyone second? I second that motion. Okay, so I'm just going to say it in my notes. Which one is Sharon and seconded by Rachel, who has been sworn in and is allowed to vote just in case anyone's case. <coughs> okay, great. So I have that in there. So um, it is our recommendation that the board continue to own the property of the, the town. The town. Excuse me, the town. Um, the town continue to own. Huh? Continue to own the property at 31 Enoch Drive for the purposes below, um, including that the town's people. Do we have a year that they voted on it? Uh, 1999. May. Do, um, do, excuse me, do we want to say something like uh, uh, referencing back why we're doing this? Or you said continue to own, but we kind of refuse the offer to purchase. Oh, okay, okay. Um, given by, so that we're, we know what we're talking about, that there was an offer on the table and we, we are refusing uh, the approval of the offer by, on the property 31 Enoch. Like that. Sure. And um, do we want to further say that we love a permanent restriction? I was just going to say I would like, I don't know whether it should be in this motion, but I would like to. 
let's just keep with the motion. We've got a first and a second on it. I want to make sure I get the wording of it right. The town continue to own 31 Enoch Drive for the purposes below, including the town people in 1999 voted to purchase the land for open space. It is a key element of the Greenway that we are working to develop. Okay. Um, so we have a motion and a second on the table. Is there any discussion? Okay. All those um, in favor? Okay. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Um, the motion passes. So we, I started this letter off by saying on behalf of the Woodbridge Conservation Commission, we are writing in regard to the property at Enoch Drive um, and our recommendations of our com as a commission for the consideration of its current and future use. So then we said that, you know, the commission voted and you just all heard the motion. Um, And continue to own the property um, and then uh, you know I've got some additional information in here about uh, the Conservation Commission recently proceeded with a request by Kupop to um, review the, the Enoch Drive for current and future use considerations as well um, for, for current and future use or I can say um, requested by Kupop to review 31 Enoch Drive or future use consideration, including um, purchase uh, sale to the neighbor, neighbor. at an adjacent property. Okay. Sorry, no. am I saying it correctly? At an adjacent property. Um, we yeah. need to put down our vote at five to three to say it was unanimous. I'm just curious. Got the point of reference to that? Passes unanimously. Yes, I think that's a good thing to say. Sure. Yeah. And then, Barbara, you further want to say that we'd like to create an easement for it? I'd like to make a motion that we request that the town. Um, put a permanent easement on the property, um, restricting it to recreation and preservation easement, to conservation easement. Put a permanent conservation easement. So, is it one of us second that? Is that a motion? I'd like to make that motion. Okay, so Barbara made the motion. Seconded by Sharon. Is there any discussion? Okay, seeing none. Um, all those in favor of also requesting that the town put a permanent conservation easement on the property. Okay, and that also passes unanimously, which I'm going to kind of spell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Great, so we covered that. So what I would, um, uh, I have a little more listed in here just about the importance of the property and that it is part of our Greenway. And um, so then we'll get rid of the whole buffer on all sides, permanent easement, funds for the sale, because we're not recommending any of that. Okay. Um, Hey, Kathy. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Okay. Should we move on to yes, the nine properties? So we understand there's three pieces. Three. One, three, and nine. Five and nine. One, five, and nine. And I. In December, we looked at these, November and December, we looked at these and determined that two of them had a great deal of wetlands on it. 
and the third one, so you've got quite a bit of wetlands on it, and we'd like to discuss what we want to do with that. Yes, so the other properties um, at 159 Brookwood Drive starts out the same way on behalf of the Woodbridge Conservation Commission. We are writing regarding the properties located at 159 Brookwood Drive, Woodbridge, Connecticut, to offer a recommendation as a commission to the town regarding the current status and potential future use. Um, recently, the commission proceeded with a request by QPOP to review these properties for current and future use consideration, as well as the location within the community um, and the current existing presence of wetlands. During our December 2023 meeting, the Woodbridge Conservation Commission determined that the properties um, are of importance due to the presence of wetlands on much of the acreage, according to the United States Geological. Ge Geological, Geological thank you. <laughs> I wrote it. Survey. <laughs> wetlands provide habitats for thousands of plant and animal species, both land and aquatic, as well as provide significant flood protection and add, act as a natural method of erosion control, improvement of water quality, and aesthetic value. It is our recommendation that due to the environmental significance of this property and the presence of wetland and the inability to develop properties, Properties, thank you, I will adjust that. The Board of Selectmen consider preserving the parcel for open space. So I can say we request that the town preserve the parcel for open space, if that is how we decide. Additionally, um, we recommend that the town of Woodbridge consider solidifying its classification by establishing a conservation easement in perpetuity, thereby guaranteeing passive recreational use and enjoyment by present and future residents of the community. Thank you for your time and consideration and thoughtfulness planning and well, you know, nice stuff. So um, that is what I wrote. Um, okay. Okay. So um, any discussion right now on I think this also goes in line with what Kupop was recommending as well for one five and nine. Um, and I know they had already voted on one and five. I think nine is still, they are voting on three and six, so we're just really in line with what they're saying. So at this point, um, I, does anybody have any questions or discussion about the properties? Okay. Um, does anybody feel strongly that they would like to make a recommendation? A motion. A motion. Would anybody <laughs> like to make a motion? <laughs> Nobody wants to make a motion. <laughs> I mean, well, do, we, do we agree? This is what we, this is what we want. So, um, okay. So, then uh, we make a motion, consider uh, preserving the parcel for open space uh, and uh, in perpetuity with the conservation easement. That would be the motion today. Right, motion. Are you waiting? No, I'm waiting for you to make it. <laughs> make Rock paper scissors. scissors. <laughs> Parcels 1, 5, and 9 of Brookwood Drive in Woodbridge um, be safe for open space I mean, because they are largely wetlands. I second it. Okay, any discussion? Um, okay, all those in favor? Okay, I'm all those opposed? Um, I'll second. No, I'll second that. Why well, I thought it came from over here, I have no idea. <laughs> but Kathy, this is the third vote, so we'll fill you in on the other yeah. two a little later. Perfect. So. Okay. So the motion passes unanimously. Are we doing anything about the lawn road tonight? Oh, so um, I, I'm sorry, I didn't write a letter for Mylan Road. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Don't make Paul come back here. I have to say that again. Mylan Road. Mylan Road, um, Mylan Road is a residential uh, property um, parcel um, that when members of the commission went up there to evaluate, noticed that there looked to be the presence of um, elements of wetlands there, even though according to the GIS map, it is not labeled as wetlands. Um, so what the commission members had discussed was possibly um, just recommending 
that before any course of action happens, that they have that property evaluated by a wetlands expert to verify whether or not the presence and the percentage of wetlands exists. Before taking any further action. Before, yeah, before taking any further action. Without it being, when, when we talked um, at the December meeting, based on the GIS map, it does not show any presence of wetlands. So the commission all agreed that there was really no reason to continue to own that parcel. That that could, it, it's zoned residential, it's you know in a residential area, um, you know, houses all around, so there'd be no reason why it could not be used for uh, residential purposes. So um, I think if, the, if, there, if there is no presence or not a, a huge percentage of presence on the property that we would continue with that uh, recommendation that you know, there's no reason. Well, I um, can interject here also that in talking about the nine Brookwood, um, they actually went to wetlands to find out about it because of the GIS showed about 50 percent, something like that, wetlands. Um, and the answer came back to them that the GIS in general just doesn't show as much wetlands as there really are in places. So that... Um, it underestimates. They under... Yes. Okay. The, the overlay does not show this. So this may be a reason for it not showing anything on my own. Okay. So, so it should be explored further, definitely, before. All right, so that, that's our recommendation. Um, sorry, I just have to save this to the right location so we don't lose it. Does somebody want to make a motion about the property at um, what number mile road is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. It was 12, I'm not sure. It's the gentleman from Coop Hop now. I'll look back. I wasn't, at I wasn't listening. I, <laughs> I said, Does the gentleman from Coop Hop know? Yeah, no, this is not my road. Or was that? No. <laughs> I haven't been testing that one yet. <laughs> we were testing you to make sure you're paying attention. All right, so we were, uh, I'll add the number to it and then um, just say that we reviewed it based on that. Okay. And during our meeting, determine the property. Um, We'll table the discussion until we have further <coughs> information about so the percentage of well, I don't know if we need to table it. We can either. I we, think well, we're, at, we're adding our recommendation into the um, uh, into the folder for into the file for Coupop, so that when they send it off to the first select uh, to the board of selectmen, that they have all of the recommendations <coughs> that they use to have weighed in. Okay. So. Um, we can say that you know our, we could make a we could make a motion um, that we recommend that the property get evaluated first, or that Coupop connect with wetlands to have an expert evaluate it first before any other consideration happens. Or we can do anything else. So would anybody like to make a motion? Or is there any other further discussion? Okay. okay. Okay, so, um, all right, fine, I'm left. It's my turn. <laughs> okay, so I make a motion that the property under consideration on Milan Road be um, first evaluated by a wetland specialist just to determine the presence and the amount of wetlands on the property um, prior to uh, a decision being made whether or not to sell or maintain ownership of that property. Second. Do you want to say that if there is not? I wish I typed that whole thing up. What was I thinking? Okay. <laughs> we have a second. Well, do you want to say that if there isn't wetlands, we, we 
Yeah, we can do, um, so let's do this motion first, okay. and then, because um, we have a second. You have a second, Barbara? Okay, any discussion on the motion? No, not at this point. Okay, all those in favor? All those opposed? Okay, that votes unanimous. Okay, um, all right, so then, do you want to further move that if there is no, or a, uh, not a significant amount of wetlands that we go with our previous recommendation that is a, it's a, uh, in a commercial residential zone and it's available for the town to figure out what's best to do with it if it doesn't have a conservation uh, as an administration. Yeah. As a conservation commission, we don't think it's an essential piece to hold. I'd like to hold off on that and see what the wetlands uh, experts say okay. about it before. Okay, that's before we end yeah, yeah. the disposal. Okay. Okay, all those in. Did you do this yet? Oh, we did vote already. Okay, we're not making a second motion. My God, I'm really tired. Okay. Um, all right, so with that, I think we have wrapped up the conversation about the Kupal properties that we need to make recommendations of. So I will finalize these letters and circulate, circulate to everybody. And if, if you have grammatical errors, please feel free to point those out. Otherwise, um, you know, just we will submit them to Kupal so they have them for the files. By the 6th. Yes, these need to go to them for the 6th. So we have... Okay. Like five whole days to look at them. They, <laughs> they need these files actually for the first of March. That's when they've been asked by the Board of Selectmen to submit <coughs> their recommendations on these five items. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but they're, they are voting as a committee on February 6th right. how to move forward. So we want our recommendations to be before them right. so sure. that it can be considered as part of their conversation. Sure. Okay. Okay. With that, should we move on to the second item in our special meeting agenda, which is um, the consideration of um, applying for a grant for um, trail maintenance and trail development that has been offered by the state of Connecticut, and the due date for that is March 11th, so we're under some kind of time constraint. And we understand that um, David Cordelia has um, had an idea and has been uh, working diligently on it and we're interested in hearing that um, as a possible uh, topic for a grant application. Perfect. So I'll give you guys some history how I ended up here. So uh, I got nominated onto Coupop um, and I started to read the um, open space plan. The, uh, and some other town information, look at what the town owned. Um, I'm also an avid trail user, so I'm in the local mountain biking chapter, Nimba, the Houston Valley one. So I'm the trail ambassador, which basically means I watch over the trails or work with the state. And I'm working with the state on Quinlan right now. Qu uh, sorry, Quillinan right now. <coughs> so, yeah, I'll show you guys. Um, so this is an app called Trails Fork. Trail Forks shows all the apps, all the trails in the area. Here is where we are. So you guys will recognize this is the Greenway. Um, in West Rocks over here. The park we're looking at, this is State Forest. And I'll show you guys four or five different maps. So don't, don't think you have to know it all from here. So, and I will slow way down when I get into the, like, what we're actually looking at. So I show you guys this because there's a lot of trails in the area. Now, this is in mostly in Sonia and Seymour. It's State Forest. This little piece is in Woodbridge. This is in Seymour. Our town dump is right up here, and baseball fields are right up here. And then this is uh, Elders League Preserve. So I show you guys that because there's a lot of trails in the area that are connected over here in Woodbridge. These are not. And why I ended up emailing some of your folks and saying, hey, I have an idea is I discovered the deep grant through that mountain biking group and we're like, hey, it's a lot of money. Are, can we apply for it, work with the state, some towns? And I said, oh, it happens. I, our town is already looking at this piece of land. So in the 
uh, open, sports, open space recommendations, they recommend a trail that basically goes from right over here, straight across this way to connect to Elder Tree. <coughs> this land is mostly regional water authority. <coughs> this land right here is already, some of it is owned by Woodbridge, Woodbridge Land Trust. And the goal was to connect, uh, there's, that's where the Savino uh, Winery is. So the goal was to connect those up. Um, what, since I don't, in the mountain biking world, we don't care what town things are in. I know the trails outside of Woodbridge as well. Just um, where the wineries end up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the plan. So there's also, there's a little piece of town property right here, the Mace property. So they were trying to say, hey, we own a bunch of land. We have this winery here. We want to connect them. Um, what I'm getting at is they're sort of in the plan. They're ignoring these trails. It's not in Woodbridge. And they're not accounting for these trails that are because there's no parking or anything, right? Going this way. Um, so let me show you guys a better view of this. So that's the starting point to give you guys an idea as I walk through this. Um, and I have no real plan besides I think this is a great opportunity. So I don't know where trails should go. I'm not a trail person. Like I've never designed trails. I don't know the environmental side of this. So we need some experts to help us. Um, but the land we're talking about is already in use for hiking, horses, logging, and there's actually commercial beekeeping in there. I, I found that there. Um, the conservation committee is already looking at it, so this is why I brought it to you guys, is you guys are already looking at that area. Uh, this deep grant is exactly meant for this kind of thing, to help municipalities and um, groups buy land, develop land, plan things out. It can be for all of that, and I'll show you the, the outline of the, the grant in a minute. Connects multiple areas to the Greenway, to the official Woodbridge Greenway, so it's a good idea. When then you can also connect the baseball fields, you can connect to other towns, so I figured that's all things the grant cares about and what folks like yourselves care about. Um, and then uh, the, when looking at the Greenway and connections, this is something that I'm happy to help you guys with ever, is um, looking at properties adjacent to the town. We know a lot about our own town, but then if it's not on the documents and not on the maps, we don't realize there's trails just outside of town. So this is an outline of the area that I'm talking about. So here's Rimmon, Route 313. Right? So if you're going to the dump, you drive up right here along this lake. And then right up here is where the, the town dump is and the baseball fields. Um, it is, I'll show you where it's part of Seymour, part of Woodbridge. It's regional water authority land, so it's already conserved. It's just we're trying to say, hey, let's do more with it. Um, and then Woodbridge Land Trust property owns some, some of the land right up here. Uh, so this is Peck Hill, and this is Elderly. Eldersley goes this way, which then connects to the Greenway. To point things out to you guys, so what I was describing is you have your baseball fields and transfer station up here. Here's Eldersley. This is the Pine Hills area, which is a hiking area that starts in Seymour. Some of the trails are in Woodbridge. Um, you can get to it through a street over here from Woodbridge. This is that Mace, Mace property. I don't know how you say that, but Mace property that Mace. the town owns. Mace. Mace. Mace property, okay? Quinlan is over here. Quillen, I'm sorry, Quillan is over here. And this is the Ansonia Nature Center. So what we're, there's already trails in here, and actually there's already trails all throughout here. Um, they're just not officially designated. Um, a lot of them are logging roads, but they are already there. Can you point out... The Massaro trails on that map, where they are? Massaro, I don't know Masaro if I know that is. It's kind of near the vineyard, right? The winery? No, they're not. The winery is up on Ford Road. Well, so is Massaro, but they're separated. So Massaro would be right here. Yeah, that's right. So, one sec. I think I only have mountain but I can turn it on. Uh, no, I'll turn it on. Let's see. So those aren't on here? That is on, they're not on this app? Um, okay. I can Bella, pull them up. trails at this part of this property? There's trails more here. I mean, this is farm, and then this has a whole little trail map. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. You guys are teaching me stuff. Right outside. So that would be a little bit south of right down here, right, right at this bottom part. Um, and you guys might be curious why I know all this. I live right there. <laughs> so 
why one of the reasons I moved to where I did is these mountain biking trails right here. So I can jump right out of my house and mountain bike like I did today. Okay. So um, this is a look at that same area. So see, so this is Seymour and Woodbridge kind of split the property. And then and Sonia is there for the state forest. So now, um, so it's partially in Seymour, so this would have to involve them. But it is all um, either Regional Water Authority or um, the, con the Woodbridge Conservation. So that's all the land we're talking about as far as I can tell. Again, I'm not an expert, but that's the way it looks. So on the, this is from one of your reports, the, green, the Greens Greenway Trail System. This little red right here off on the left, that is part of that Pine Hills area. So Woodbridge the town line basically goes like this right through it. So that's part of the map. And what I'm proposing is we connect that to everything by going up and over to the right, which is already what the, so here's another look. This is Quillenden, which sits right here. This top right, right here, this is um, Osborne Lane, is right there. So this whole trail system is sitting just to the left of this map. This is the proposed new trail. So again, the winery is where this part point starts. It cuts this way, goes on to that, that mice property, and then goes straight across, and then comes up. My point is, you can do a lot with this, and there's already trails in there. So instead of just going straight, let's talk to Seymour, let's talk to the Regional Water Authority, and see if we can um, make, some, make a less direct trail. So the, uh, in, my, in my view, for consideration, you can do one minor trail. That's what's being proposed right now in the, the Greenway plan. Um, so one trail addition, one minor project. Could be a major development. This is a lot of area. Um, there's, as I said, there's already like un, unmarked trails in there, unapproved trails in there. Um, they won't go along the reservoir on the top side, and then they go all the way up to Eldersley. They go all the way to the actual Pine Hills area. So there's a lot of stuff in there. There's logging in there, so there's those uh, kind of horse trail roads. Um, right now, it is rated for hiking and horses, but not biking. So one of my requests is we also ask to allow bikes, non-motorized, so just mountain bikes. And then if we can allow bikes in there, the NEMA folks would be in support and can help organize volunteers and development. Um, the NEMA folks, like if you said, hey, we need somebody to help us develop trails, they know who to ask. So that's, that's their, they're good at getting volunteers. They don't have money, right? That's, that's a volunteer group. Um, so it's, uh, it's more of like if you wanted to remove invasive species and you know dig some trails and mark them, that's the kind of organization that, that they can do. Um, and then find like a trail master to help you build trails. This is uh, taken right from the grant website. Um, so nothing on the bottom has changed and the link's down there. Um, so it's meant, it's $10 million this year and then I believe it's $10 million again next year in state funding. Uh, it's meant for planning and design, construction, maintenance and restoration, at even acquisition of land, um, and oper operational and educational programs, and increased access to trails. So in my mind, this could achieve all of that, um, except for buying land, I don't think we're trying to buy any, though if there's a piece that is open on that right side, on uh, Peck Lane, that could be a, a way to do that. Some of the scoring in that grant that I noticed, um, it favors connections to other areas, it favors connections to distressed municipalities, which Ansonia and Derby are um, distressed municip municipalities. And, and both of them can include EJ communities. Yep, exactly. Um, and then if we, if we write in there, we're going to run an education program about proper trail use, then the grant favors that. So you can put in, like, hey, we're going to put proper signage, we're going to do some education. So that's what I wanted to bring to you guys is I think the grant's a great opportunity. Um, and knowing this area pretty well, that's a big swath of land that can, it's already conserved. It's just what, you know, we can actually get, get funding to develop it and figure out the right way to do it and hire the right folks to do surveys in there if needed. Whatever needs to happen, we can get funding to do that. So I think it's a... I have a couple questions. Yeah. One is, when I listened to the video about it and I remember hearing something at a conference, 
that you can also create the grant to just create the development of the plan mm -hmm. before you actually enact the plan. And that sounds like an appropriate possible first step since it's a big piece and there'll be quite a few decisions. But you also, I think, spoke about how many trails already were there, so the creation of trails might not be as cumbersome as it might some other place because there's logging trails and <coughs> trails and this trail, so it might be cleaning them up and marking them and putting them on their maps versus really having to cut down tons of trees and change the topography. Yeah, I mean, you can get from the baseball field all the way to Quillenden right now on trails. Uh, they get overgrown. From baseball fields, you can follow trails all the way down. Um, you can get up to Elders Lake. I mean, I've walked all these trails. Um, they're. Down or down. He said Quillen, 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 which is Quillen. near it. It's the state forest in Ansonia. So that's this it's lower so, part. So, uh, is so, that the name of the property of the park, park trails, whatever, down Roman Road on the yes. left hand side? Yep. That goes all the way down to the reservoir down there? Yeah, so yeah. Okay. Quillen is down here. And there's a parking lot there too, isn't there? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, State Forest. So I'm working with the forester to fix up some of those trails. And he wants to get rid of some of the illegal ones. I want to propose at moving those to places he likes better. Um, so uh, I'm laughing because it's always a, a, you know, a fun discussion when I'm like, hey, let's fix some of these. And he's like, we should remove them. <laughs> okay. Really? Um, well, so they have to. They have the map, and then there's three other three trails that people just added over time. Um, they're decent trails, but like one of them's just completely eroded because you shouldn't put a trail there, right? It's kind of it was on too steep, going kind of sideways when it should be a switchback that then it doesn't get eroded. So, um, so it's just always funny to talk those things. But I have a question. This is separate from what you're proposing. Separate. This is all separate because that's on state land. That's part of the state so, forest. But that could connect to what we do. What exactly. We do so yeah, if you look at, um, let me bring that trail map back up. So what I'm getting at is this whole system right here is that state forest. Um, this is actually that legal trail I'm talking about right there in black. Um, and then what I'm getting at, this right here is we, Ribbon Road, 313 is right here. Can't see it well, but it's right there. And then this is water authority land that you can easily connect over. Um, or you do it across here. This is where that little waterfall is. Um, and then you come up. And these trails are already there. These are declared. That's called Pine Hills. And then if you want to come, the, the proposal is to come straight across and take a right and connect to Eldersley right here, which is what this is. What I'm saying is this is a lot of land, and you can actually connect up to the town dump and the baseball fields up here. So this could be a great way to expand, and it's a lot of it is already protected, already town land, or Woodbridge land conservation, um, and this would extend the greenway all the way to that state forest. And you're also saying that there's trails that are kind of there that could just be... Yeah, oh yeah, the trail could, so some of those I think are completely reasonable. Everybody would be like, yeah, they're fine. Um, I suspect if we had the foresters in there, they'd say, not the best spot for a trail. There's, it's right through the middle of the swamp or something like that. Because um, the loggers don't quite account for that. They kind of go direct. Um, and then the, uh, but like these trails are, yeah, they're already approved, these two. So you'd really be saying like, okay, we come off this and somehow make our way this way. Like, this is, if you ever drive to the town dump, There's this is on your right there. side. There's, you can see the trail right yeah. by the gate, yeah. right? It's very obvious. Yep. And you can go on this little peninsula. There's a little uh, yeah. seating area. Yeah. So really cool spot that I think could be added pretty easily. The fact that it's already protected. We're just looking, and it's already in use. We just want to expand it. And we can now. What type of uh, um, mileage are we talking about? Four or five miles, or do you have any? I don't area? know. Like, so if you went direct, um, I don't know if this map has a mile. I don't think it's. This says thousand feet. So that right here, this map right here, that's a thousand feet. So if you're looking at, you know, five of those, you'd be looking at. Wow. You could do. I mean, if you made sort of curly trails, right, not direct, you could add not miles of trails in here. It's a lot of land. It's, it's pretty big. I mean, this area we're talking about is bigger than 
this state forest area, right? There's a lot of land in here. Because you connect all the way up here. I have a couple of questions. Sure. Number one, is there any place that all these little trails you're talking about are, are down on a piece of paper? Is there um, any drawing go, of them? At all? I can go map them if you guys want on this app. Um, usually I don't record trails that aren't marked just because then they usually, people start yelling at me about them. Uh, that's kind of the, the idea. Um, so what I mean is, I, you can go record these, they're state marked, that's right. fine. If I'm on a trail that's kind of not great or not, you're not really supposed to be on it, then uh, usually don't record it. But I can record this stuff and, and mark it for you guys. And the other question is, how much of these trails are on private property, how much of them? As far as I can tell, none. <coughs> right? It's water authority, water town, county. or, yeah, like if you look along, on the, again, on the way the town dump, you have these houses right here. Mm -hmm. But it's very obvious that their houses end, right? And this is actually, you can right, see the water. They're sort of up and away, too, I think. Yeah, they're, well, they're sitting down low, and there's a oh. ridge, and right. it's, there's, you know, stone walls and stuff back there, and it's pretty it's obvious where their road. property ends. Um, like, all of them kind of have their yard, and then 20 feet of woods, and then it changes, right? It, it, yeah. It's all part of the old wall system. Oh. And you can see, yeah, old roads in here. It does mark it a little bit. Like, this is a logging road coming up. There's a gate up here um, by Eldersley. I think so there, drop some right road, in. there are some signs that say this was in a state of this mm -hmm. and this was in a state of that. So just sort of in the midst of the, those woodlands, too. Yeah, and then on some of these, and you guys can't see everything on there. Right over here is where Woodbridge Land Trust already owns some of these properties. Mm -hmm. I know because they're coming up in Coupa to just be aware of that we're, we're looking at it. And does um, Land Trust have any policy about biking or hiking or, or um, horseback? The same time I emailed you guys, I emailed them. I haven't heard back. Um, I don't know those folks yet. So I am... Brian Pine is the one to connect with. Okay. Back. So I'm a big fan of doing it the right way. That's why I'm working with Forrester. That's why I'm talking to you guys. So try to get these officially <coughs> approved the right way. And now we can get funding for it. I think it's a win-win. I have a question about the, probably about the application. They talked about approvals, and if we needed to have approvals from the water company, do we need to go through that step, or just that we're going to do that after we get maybe the funding? But they, so they the, talk about the approval yep. process. So the scoring, the, the scoring has a section and basically says like permits, licenses, easements. If you have it all, you get higher scoring. If you don't have it, you get lower scoring. Um, so when you score the grant, you don't have to have it all figured out, um, but it, it's all, it's like different sections, you can get a 10, a 5, or a 0, or a 10, an 8, and a 7, so the different sections, one is about like leases and things like that. I don't think you have to have it all work out to apply, um, that's the way it looks to me, again, not an expert in this, but... Val, um, well, if you have time to call the Regional Water Authority, the name I was given is Steve Vitko. Vitco, V-I-T-C-O. Um, so it seems like there's... If he's still there, but he was the one, sorry, he was the one who typically worked with towns, Steve Vitco. The guy at JT emailed me back today. I was, I was oh, the water for me? I was poking at them too. Okay. For the state area. Um, oh, for the state, not for the regional water authority? Yeah, because there's a whole... There's regional water authority on the other side of the road, yeah. and uh, there's trails right next to it, and then we, all the trails won't go into the water authority, but you can hunt in there. Like, hey, can we put trails in there? Like, and connect to Pine Hills? Like, because right now it's Pine Hills and the state forest, they're like this, and you have 313 in between. One's like way up the hill, one's down. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, can we just put a path straight across? Sure. Um, mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. So in order to do a trail, you have, you may have to excavate, you may have to cut trees. What else do we need to? Usually, so trees trees and things like that, that's usually a parking lot if you want one. Um, for trails, you just go around the trees. Usually, yeah. you're not really cutting but much. Cut trees? Oh, usually, no. Maybe um, brush or something. Yeah, like trim branches, maybe like, like prickers kind of brush. You, you'll knock that down. But usually, when you're building trails, you don't really mess with trees. You go around them. Right. Part of this um, also was um, developing a maintenance plan mm -hmm. if, you, if you get that far. So I think the first piece of it, um, and just want to be aware that your email is up on the screen. 
No, no, I was trying to pull oh, okay. the water authority. <laughs> Just so you know. It's all, it's all <laughs> being recorded right now. <laughs> Here it is, JT Jeffrey Tria. Okay. I don't know if you guys want that email. John. Sorry, John Tria. Tria. Uh, J Triana1 at our water. Oh, from the uh, water. Do you got that? Do you have that? So I was specifically asking about Pine Hills, and this is the guy that answered me. So why don't you and why don't you connect sure. Val with whoever you're communicating with already, and then so this application comes up really quickly. It, it's due March 11th, um, and I think at least for the time being, we're done with the Coupon property reviews until they get their next batch ready. Um, the only other thing, you know, the selectmen sent us the RFPs they want us to have, the RFP responses they want us to have a look at. Um, so I guess the question is, number one, is the commission interested in supporting looking into this? And we've got a yes from Ben. Everybody's... It's a great idea whether we can actually pull it off by... Yeah, that, that was sort of my question is, what level of detail needs to go into this grant application? Like, is it, we're going to plan on hiring a forester and they're going to tell us the best place for a trail, or do we need to say, here's where we want to put the trail, and now give us the okay. uh, So my imagination is, if you want, if you're going to need a forester and these guys like lay that out, so you have the right costs, exactly how the trails come out, I think you can, you don't have to have the plan done, because it's forward planning, but I think you would want to write, if you want to, is this right? if you want to go for the whole thing at once, you kind of guess, we're going to need this guy, that guy, this guy, this guy, they're going to tell us where the trails go. We're going to estimate six miles of trails, and that usually costs this much, right? Whatever. That would be my guess. The other way to do it is we're going to go for a planning grant, and then next year we'll go for a bigger grant. Okay. Once we have the plan, like oh. I don't. But I have never done this, and as you guys said, coordinating multiple municipalities, water authority. That I don't know. Yeah, that seems right. to me kind of the decision point. Like, do we plan to make a plan, or do we plan to go for it? <laughs> I think the time frame, the actually, unless time, there's, I, I defer to the people that already know how to do it. I mean, if, if like Andy the Trailmaster goes, hey, I know how to do this, like I've done it before, and this is what you're going to need, then you kind of, that would answer to me, then you might go for the whole thing. If it's me, like, me, like I'm your resource, I don't know, right? I'd go for a planning one first. Well, also yeah. being a newbie, like, we don't know if money will be guaranteed in the future, right? I mean, this isn't something they do on an annual basis. It is. It? This yeah. one is, okay. it's not every year, it's at least this year and next year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's all coming from Most state dollars. Year. So I read into where this is coming from. It's uh, the state has a whole recreation plan, yeah. and to get the federal dollars, they have to increase access and open space. So this okay. is all a federal, a big federal program to increase open space and access to it. Right. So that's why that's where the scoring comes from. That's the money is actually federal money, but to get that federal money it has to expand, which is why this one is written that way. Right, so, so, so there um excuse, there is an application we and there was a video. Okay. And how it started, I thought that they said that we had opted out of the federal. Did you see that that video part? How much <coughs> that Connecticut had opted out of the federal. I think because they didn't increase enough, so that's this grant is to then get them back into okay. that. So that's my assessment based yeah. on what I'm part, figuring out. Yeah, part of the reason that um, they found out that after COVID, the pandemic, um, in 2021 and 2022, that Connecticut really did well with outdoor recreation. And then it went from 44 million to 66 million. So there's an economic part of this. Mm -hmm. And I first didn't understand well, what what were people buying? Because you know, my husband goes out and gets a stick and walks around. So I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure well, he how pays how is this happening? How was how how are they, right, right? Like, where is the money coming? But then I spoke to I'm, I'm Valerie. I spoke right. to you. I spoke to Dave. And that makes more sense if people are buying bikes or motorized bikes and gear. So there's money that, 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 that the state is generating from outdoor recreation. 
along with skiing and everything hiking else. Hiking boots. Hiking boots. So mm -hmm. they, they've looked at this and they're saying that this is trails make money. Hmm. Um, jobs, yeah, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, jobs and then, you know, then aligning them with other businesses right. and then also aligning with the Greenway and then also with maybe Ansonia and D Derby. Well, there's that's what this is about. And uh, also with this grant, you can, in addition to paying for working with experts and you using the time to plan, it can also be <coughs> for town staff time, like to administer. What we also need to talk about is that 20% of it needs to be put up by yeah. the town. Yes, or is a match. Yeah, or it can be, so like, NEMBA volunteers that come cut trails, we have a $35 rate, we track our hours, and that can count towards that 20%. Um, if the town forester is out there, the state forester, his actual job rate is used. So if you're a contractor, you build houses, and you're building us a bridge, you have a rate of like $300 an hour. So you can find a way to not put up that 20%, it can be a lower number, or if it's all volunteer based and you're building a lot, you can Exceed now, that there is an important part of this is that the town has to put up the money and put a state that um, pays it once the, the, the whole thing is done. So yeah, it's a reimbursement. It's a reimbursement. Right. reimbursement. Mm -hmm. So yep. that is yeah, that's it. That's something to make sure everybody knows involved, it is right? not money up front. Yeah. My recommendation from here would be for Val. You seem to have a pretty good handle on you know what could happen. <laughs> Homework sign <laughs> and reading. Um, you have a pretty good idea and what who needs to be involved and, and just you know what the interest is, right? And Dave, you have a clear picture in your mind as to what potential you know we have here. I, I think I, I don't know how everybody else feels. I feel like we are at the planning stage. Mm -hmm. So um, the next step would be to talk to Tony Genovese, who is the director of finance to talk to Andy Danzig, who is the trail master, and just say, we want to put together an application for planning at this point, you know, with, with the intention of following up on, you know, construction the following year. And, you know, what, what, do, what do we need to have together for this application? Um, and see, our next meeting is February 15th. So we want to, have most of that um, baked, like a clear idea of what we need for this application. Um, because from there, you know, February 15th, we will have less than a month to, to finalize it and get it together. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like within the next two weeks that gives you enough time to coordinate with uh, Tony and Andy just to see that we have our ducks in a row to move forward with this? Does that sound? I mean, just good? gathering information and not doing the application, just right. Well, information okay. gathering first. Yeah. Well, I, does I somebody have the have the actual yeah grant? I have, I have the application, application here if you want. for planning. Yeah. Yeah, you do. It it's the same cost line item. It's on the website. It's the same application. You just tick the box off for oh, what okay. you're doing, right? Yeah, I don't know Maintenance what you do. so or uh, you, you tell them like, hey. Are you doing tasks A, B, C, D, and like you say, which ones you're doing, right? And then you mm -hmm. propose budgets for okay. that. Mm -hmm. um, so I have some experience doing big government grants. I used to be, I was on a proposal team for large companies. So the biggest reason you don't win is you get disqualified. You don't tell them something they ask for. If they say, let's say, uh, we have some secret moose, moose population, there, right, making stuff up. If you, they ask about it, you have to say, no, we don't have that. If you don't answer, you can get just kicked out. Right. So it's right. It's it's you just have to whatever they ask for, you answer, you answer, you like line by line, tell them exactly what they ask for. Doesn't apply, you say it does not apply. Whenever you're doing government paperwork, it's just right. the and first person that reads it is not the foresters and the recreation people. It's the it's kind of the Colors. forms people. Yeah, right. the forms people, and they just kick out the bad ones, and the good pile goes in. So. Whatever they ask for, you just have to. Right, and, and we have to determine, it. you know, what the scope of this planning project would be, and what what that price ticket is for. It. So the cost that's going to be there, and understanding what the town's responsibility is for in kind or whatever, and, and then also that based on what that price tag would be for planning, the town has to front that money first, and then get reimbursed for Should it. Should we be um, since the 
board selectmen have to be involved and they only meet once every other week, it seems like we should maybe alert Mika or people on the board of selectmen that were thinking of this so that they schedule it into their meeting in three weeks or so so that it gets so that we can then get it approved in a timely fashion. So that might be something else to do is to give them a rough idea. Okay. Yeah. Or maybe Kathy can talk to <laughs> see the email that I homework assignment. <laughs> Mr. Genovese that we Yeah, you did. You had right, already he said that yeah. he we would start it and then he would finish it. So I are we speaking about the major grant or the or the major trail or the minor one in terms of scaling it back for this year or I would think we wouldn't be thinking about any trails. We're just thinking about planning for doing trails. There's a grant for planning, to, to, but I, I think even that we have to decide on the scope. Are we planning for two trails or twenty trails? Because uh, and I'm sort of and I think conversations with Andy, the trail master, will help us understand. Mm -hmm. You know what what that how intensive that would be for one versus the other, and conversations with Tony would help us understand what what that that cost is going to be. And I feel like general scope can. Her trails can just sort of be like doing what the Greenway already suggested and connecting those areas. And, and it seems like the idea of connecting to those other communities, like you, you kind of didn't go over like what potential trails would be there, but that seems like that would be a big selling point too. So mm -hmm. just, you know, under those two kind of guidelines that we can figure out what the best trail system would be. Yeah, I wanted to point you guys to in the application when you're looking at it, they have the actual application. His guidelines, this tells you what they're after. Um, so, did you write a complete proposal? What is your budget or impact? Here's where, like, land ownership. Is it all public lands? You get better scoring, right? And all of these are one to five, so you get a five, a three, or a one. Um, are you connecting to Connecticut's Greenways? You get a ten, right, for, for what we're trying to do. So, what the scoring rubric really tells you is what they're after, and then you tailor your grant application to check those, check as many of those as you can. Mm -hmm. So, I, like that. I didn't see that. That's very helpful. Yeah, this is there's just kidding, this is government paperwork. It's, the application's right. relatively short. You write whatever you want in there. This is how they score. Right. So, accessibility. This is where like you need a parking lot with a handicap spot. Like that would get you that. Um, the right. Are you having an environmental review? Yep, it's in our grant. We're going to have an environmental review. <coughs> now you get eight points. So this is how they're going to score it. Do um, they have to know who's going to do the environmental review, or you just say that I'm going to, we're going to do it? I'd say, I'd say you don't have to have somebody selected. You right. have to have a reasonable cost. So you look at one the town has done in the last few years. You say, all right, this is a bigger piece of land. Let's double it. That's our guess, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then maintenance plan, additional considerations. Um, they're going through educational Education methods, so are you going to educate your town about it? So, great, that's not that hard to put together. You put it in there, so you're going to gain scoring by doing those things. We can um, do this after the fact, And not you before. only get paid once you actually do those things. Yep, oh yeah, you got to do what you said. So if you're not going to yeah. do it, don't sign up for it. Um, letters of support, right, do you have the, like, this would be like Seymour's letter of support, things like that. Um, so you can apply without it. Sonia, Derby, the Land Trust. Right, so if you're doing the plan, you may not need their letter of support, but when you actually go to do it, you'll need their buy-in, right? That, that. But if you have it early, that'd be a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, so prior involvement, so if you do two different grants, that'd be good. Um, innovation, distribution, right? So this is what they're after. And they, this is why I say you can get not disqualified, but if you're not hitting the scoring, you won't win. So Dave, we can say we will provide these documents. We will not have them buy. Say we'll do an educational program. When, when these trails are completed, we'll do an educational program on proper trail use. We will put signs up that explain the proper trail Great. use. Maps. We'll send this out in our yeah. local newspaper and okay. blah, 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 right? Like, and, okay, then you got to go do it once, once you're ready. Um, but yeah, so the scoring document is huge because that's what they'll bring you on. Mm -hmm. And they're just going to walk through it and go, yep, this is 10, this is an 8, this is 2, and the winners get the money. 
So we don't use that document. I mean, this is, shows my ignorance. We write things that indicate that we would get those points. We don't check it off and say, well, we'll have to do it. We, have to do it. we check it off in our mind, but we don't. <laughs> So when, yeah, this is the actual application. When you're writing into these sections, you're saying, like, because it just gives you, like, educational project application supplement. You could say, we're not doing this, but you lose the points. So it's kind of... Do you have to use that, or can you do an attachment? Uh, well, they give you a Word download if you want. So, yeah, you can, you can, you can write in okay, the document. Right, yeah. But no, you have to write in here. Sometimes we... And they usually have limits on all your, your lengths, and yeah. yeah they, some often will say it has to be even 600 words or less. Or less, yeah. Yeah, so they'll give you a word version, but you have to... Um, they'll be specific on word limits, they'll be specific, because they don't want to read 30 pages in one page, right? They can't compare. It has to be kind of all the same, right? Mm. All government rules. So also, there were 100... There were 90 people at the video, the video was January 11th, and so the video is on the state website, um, and I believe there were 160 actually registered, and all of them, or part of them, may be applying for the same grant of, I think it was nine, I thought it was nine million, nine or ten million, so. Yeah, like the, our chapter president was at the meeting, right, but listened to it on, on Zoom, so it's right. folks like that, right, it's all the organizations were like, we might have free money to go do something with, right? And then you gain support, you put in good ideas, and that's how you get stuff built. What do you anticipate this budget to be, though? What, what are we talking about? I have about? no clue. I've never I mean, been all trails. I mean, in my mind, you need some kind of environmental look from Water Authority or the outside party. Um, I don't know if Water Authority would need some funding to change to do bureaucracy, right? Change the land use and add trails or whatever. Um, that don't know, and then like per mile of trail, how much does it cost? I'm sure you can find that online somewhere, like some kind of metric. I think but, Andy would know also. I think you'd have a good sense. Like, do I think it's a two million dollar effort? How... No, mm -hmm. but if you want a big parking lot, it might be right. No. And the dollar budget we have to put together for this is just how much is it going to cost us to plan, to plan the next one, right? So it's yes. like. If we would just wanted to hire a consultant to make the whole plan for us, mm. that would be the, our cost, right? Mm -hmm. That's, that's you know, good. just if that's the way we want it to go. Mm. That's okay. True. And um, um, I think we also ought to, in planning, for the planning, we ought to speak with the land trust because they have potential um, trails going on around up there too. Mm -hmm. Yep, they own some of that land. They, and they, are, they may be a good resource for something. They have, like they have some trails, but they also have some, some in the pipeline. That they're, um, yeah, this might be their interest. They, they've been buying properties right. up there around Eldersley. So, and um, a and they the also, time. for instance, the, the property that we went, the development on, excuse me, on Rimmon Road, where they just recently got that the uh, um, easement. The yeah. back of it, the development is going in there. Yeah, um, and that's all part of the connection. So I think we should keep in mind that we have to in kind or produce, or the town has to produce the amount of money. So the amount that we ask for, we also have to be ready to produce twenty percent of that. So or so, yeah, yeah. So you know, thinking about that, there's also the sustainable CT grant, which we I don't I don't really know how much it's for right now. But that's a matching grant. So if let's say you know, listen to Dr. Ben's advice here and just hire a consultant who's you know could put the package together us in year one, which really does sound like the smartest way to do this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they give us a price tag. Um, we could potentially you know fund fundraise within the town um, those you know those additional dollars that we need for that cost sharing um, cost sharing element. We could yeah. That, that's my you know, through uh, the state the grant, might be willing to we could see mm -hmm. if the land trust could contribute something, and then also there's in kind. So any uh, you know any hours that the yeah, keep in mind you don't have to be in trails. Like I'm not biked in there. That is an in kind hour. I'm spending time on the trails. You right. I'm just not biking. That's what I'm saying. So I'm marking. Oh, we got to cut like a tree fell. We got to cut it. Like so, I got an hour today in kind in the state forest. So it's not like you have to be, you can just be hiking it, looking at it to assess this project. 
right? You go for a two hour hike, all of you go, that's 10 hours in time. Yeah, right. whatever that, whatever that yeah. So it's not, it's not like you have to be shoveling to get it. It's, it's all the, everything that goes into it. Perfect, okay. So are we all, um, are we in favor of moving forward, just looking, looking at mm -hmm. this and seeing if we can get our application together for, um, sure. for planning? And as I, I've told anyone that I've talked to a little bit, um, I'm happy to help. I don't have time to lead it, like to, to really lead it, but I'm happy to help if I can. So if you guys are like, hey, can you, some, like the thing I showed you here, can you summarize this and like put it for the grant? Like, yeah, no problem. That would be great. Or can you show us some trails that are on there that are illegal? That I think would be useful to show at least Andy Danzig what's there so he can assess how much. Yes. That would be great. Sure. <laughs> and, and also, Dave, you're coming as an individual or as part of... No, I am speaking for Dave and Mel Mike, um, and town resident. So, no, this is not part of Coupon. I would probably be working with you guys as part of that, but this is just... Um, as I dug into what you guys, your reports and your plans, I was like, oh, I know about this grant, and you guys are trying to do this, and I figured I'd bring it up to you guys. So would, it, would it make sense for us to have a working group with other committees, or you want to just keep it with conservation because everybody has a certain amount of insight in oh yeah knowledge. definitely definitely so would it make sense to have some money from coupa blank to work on Absolutely. this or I what think the problem with that is that if we only have a month to do it trying to organize people and doing it in that kind of way could be more tricky but i think getting andy danzig and say can i talk to you these three times in this next two weeks and can i talk to ryan pine from the land trust and can, so i think for the for efficiency's sake, I think that just organizing a group would take two weeks. So I'm just not sure that that would be the strategy that could be used in this particular instance myself. And Coupop is very focused right now on other topics. <laughs> yes. Do you have the exact mileage that we're talking about? Would that help at all to kind of for the planner, like? What the total mileage is that we're looking at, so that we kind of get a sense. Because yeah, yeah, the first question is average. estimated project cost, estimated or total well, number. And does anybody have time to work on this? Right. That is, that, that's a real question. I mentioned that mm -hmm. because real you had taken an interest in the in, in the topic, but I don't right. want to dump this on your lap. Right? The, the question is, do you do you have time over the next four weeks, four to five weeks? I have some time, but I don't think I have enough information and knowledge. Right. At all to be able to effectively do this, I wouldn't do. I just don't. I won't have. I wouldn't have it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and also, so I think I'm somebody the, with the land trust. So I think like the to get to pull an application together, it would have to be you know Dave, land trust, town, Andy. Um, you know, and then conservation can weigh in on it. But we. So we, Dave, you're saying you don't have the time to lead. Uh, not just the time, I'm not, I, cost, I have no idea. I just Google things, right? I've never done anything like this. So I'm not the right person to do it. If you want me to say, like, hey, can you summarize how this connects to Ansonia? Yeah, like through these parks right here, it's very simple. Like, meaning I can write stuff out for you guys and help in pieces. I'm not the right guy to put this up. Like, well, Tony would be the right guy to do that. That yeah, if you have Andy and he says like, yeah, no problem, 50 grand for an environmental estimate, this for that, this for that, okay, that's, that changes it. Like we need the right person right, to help us. So do you have time over the next two weeks to see if those, you can put those pieces together? Oh yeah, like summarize these slides and kind of say like, here's the area. But connect with Andy and see if he's got that knowledge and to make sure that we have the resources in place to actually pull an application together. Um, I can help yes. a little. I have a question. It was my impression after looking at the video that some of the grants were around 75000 to that not even a million that it was going to be shared. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I think, think, it was, I think it was 50. Was it 50 people? 50 pounds? <coughs> I think it was going to be a shared. So we have to keep that in mind. That That's what I'm wondering. How What is our budget going to be? This, I think it's everybody. a win, even if we do a smaller thing, personally. Yeah. Um, and I like what Ben was saying, is, or Rachel, is that to me, what will get us the most points, will be the most efficient, is if instead of this straight line that I think Dave, you mentioned, is sort of 
ridiculously unenvironmental that we craft a trail or two that connects towns because that's mm -hmm. where we'll get points mm -hmm. and that we connect other groups of land and then over time whether they're official or unofficial other trails can be created but creating the connection I think yeah, like is the, perfect, the key perfect connection. submission I can draw you guys that that's, that's not bad so basically right. what we're saying is when you look at what's already there wait hold on this is already there we're saying hey come off this tip and go up to elders Lyric right here and go to the baseball fields right and then over here connect to the state forest right these are not big trails these so are let's three. just say this here can i come up here so you're saying connect here and connect here up to the baseball fields is that right yeah baseball and fields are right up here connect here <coughs> to and then the state forest is right down here, so connect. It's actually not this red thing, because it's. Oh, okay. That's so only the here. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be like, it's like 500 yards of trail over here, okay. and then it'd be, I don't know, a mile of trail, uh -huh. a Y that you put in. Connect the baseball fields, connect to Eldersley. So, that's kind of it. Sure. There are, we're thinking so many such. And most so of what you're saying here, right? is, so is getting here. the permission to so that's that's what what this would be. To me, yeah, that, Seymour I mean, and Regional Water Authority, if they give a thumbs even up. even think about it, we yeah. have to find out whether they would be Yeah, that's the starting point. So, but Valerie asked a good question. And Sonia is here, correct? Um, where your hand is now, above that is uh, Seymour. Seymour starts right up here. So we could connect, I mean, because I think connecting more than one town would have Here's a look. Here's advantage. a look at it. So, connect the state forest is down here. Uh -huh. That's already has trails. Regional Water Authority strip right along Rimmon. And then okay. this whole side is Regional Water Authority. That The circle trail I was just showing you starts about here. The white trail's here. The red trail's right here. So we'd be talking about come off the tip of the white trail and see more. Come up to the right, connect here. You can do that pretty easily. It already exists, by the way. So if we wanted to connect to Ansonia. <laughs> well, I think that's the key piece, isn't right there? Yep. Yeah. To connect to Ansonia. So you, all you have to do is from right about here on Ribbon, okay. you have this trail that goes straight to the already existing that's purple. That's not in Woodbridge. <coughs> it's not in Woodbridge. That's in no. Ansonia. So from Ansonia. Woodbridge to Ansonia, I think they said it had to be within one half tenth a mile. One to, yeah, or one tenth of a mile, half a mile. So where can we connect from Woodbridge to Ansonia right there? What? Um, you're asking me, so again, oh, we don't have the, we don't have the trail yet. The, again, the, there are some of the properties that that the trust has as easements that are within feet of Enzo. Oh, yep. Okay. Well, then that would be over there behind Osborne Lane, etc. So. Um, so here's a look at this is ribbon right here. And Sonia is right down here. So all you have to do is a little trail right there. Well, maybe you could create the most efficient way to connect the Eldersley, that circle, and Sonia and Seymour. Yeah. And that would be, I would think, a reasonable starting point that would add to the Greenway and add to, and I think you're right, Barbara, if the regional water authority is thumbs up or thumbs down, that makes a huge that's a huge difference. Changes, yeah. Everything. And getting in touch with the right person and having a little presentation, someone like Ben, I mean Dave, to do that would be great. <laughs> and uh, maybe one of us and Dave could talk to a regional water authority person. And that would be a Here's a better view of what I'm saying. This already exists. This is Pine Hills. That's in Seymour. To connect to Ansonia, Ansonia starts somewhere like right here. This is Water Authority land too. But we That's why it's not We can't create a trail in Seymour. Right. We have one. Seymour says we can. We can. Well, I think uh, it would have to come from Woodbridge. What, so what uh, the Woodbridge Conservation Plan is proposing is you're up here, and you stay in Woodbridge, and you go kind of straight across. This is town land right here, so they're mm -hmm. using that. The problem is up here. You need easements on people's property. Um, my point to that plan, to saying, hey, the plan, you're being narrow-minded. There's already trails right here, right? But they're in Ansonia. So instead of trying to get easements, 
connect to the Insonia trails and you just loop around. Um, mm -hmm. This is all water authority land, right against there. And then this is all water authority, so we just, again, same comp same plate people, you get permission to connect to here, or up here, wherever you want. Um, and then on the other side, this is the tip of that white trail that's already out there. And you come up and go to Eldersley, and then if you want it, you can have a Y split off and the baseball fields are right here. Well, that would be the one. Yeah. Yeah, these aren't terribly long areas. Um, as you can see, there's already some old roads in there. These are basically old roads. Uh, this is the dash line. Uh, so it already exists. There's actually a gate up here. There's a little entrance right I'm sure here. I've been on that. It's pretty. That wouldn't take much to do that. It's right there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but there's no maintenance, there's no trail map, there's no right like that's why we can we can get all that done with, with grant funding. Okay, so I just want to be respectful of everybody's time because we are uh, late and um, I I think this has been really insightful, really exciting. And Dave, I appreciate you know yeah. we all appreciate you coming out and talking to us about it. Um, do we have a plan on what our next steps are to move forward? It sounds like Sharon, you are really interested in this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Sharon and Val can support each other. I, I think we should have a working group and then we can report it back and see how far. I don't yeah, like see how far you get before our next yeah. meeting. It's two weeks away. I think, yeah, yeah, I think Woodbridge Land Trust can be helpful. Um, how do we get to the Water Authority? I think that's the biggest, like, I'll call them. So I'll you've got a couple of contacts yeah. there when you start with that. You, you seem to know who to contact at uh, the land trust. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was accusing you of knowing. I, I, mean, I just think that we should keep the parameters around maybe 100,000. I'm not sure if we can get oh, anywhere close less. to a million. Or no, we don't. No, no. Unless million. you built the parking lot, this is, trails are not that. No. It no. should be that. Oh, okay. I'm right. good. No. Thank you. No. I'm okay with oh, your 30, The reason I say parking oh, lot is yeah. I think no, Eldersley has one. Um, the State Forest has one, so I don't know if you really need one. Well, yeah. it talks about accessibility, so. Um, and the and the. That's why. That's the only reason. Transportation has year. one. Where the car, the baseball. You can ask our consultant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just gonna do it for us. Okay, so we've got thank you for coming. Thank you. Okay, so with that, thank you so much. Um, I don't think we have a vote that we need to take on this. Other than we're just. Interested this in this story. Yeah, okay. interested in moving forward. Thanks everybody for um, the letter review, the property review for Coupop, so we have those ready to go for the next five days. Um, that's my homework assignment. You have your own homework assignment. Everybody's got their own stuff we're working on and um, still reading five uh, hundred pages of documents. <laughs> so but we should give people oh, I guess we can't talk about it. It's about next week because it's not one of the agenda. No, we cannot. So, um, and then yeah. I wanted to offer, if you guys are bumping into trail areas and stuff, I've probably been on them. So if you want just Dave's take on trails, let me know. That'd be great. Thank um, you. Happy to help. You're so, hired. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you send us your contact. Your, your presentation. Email. Yeah, it's, most of you guys, I think, okay. three of you have my email and cell phone. Yeah, so yeah. you're welcome to share. Yeah, that's great. We okay. appreciate it. Thanks so much. No problem. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. I said, I, I did. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, Sorry, I was just asking, does anyone want to make a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. The meeting is now adjourned. Okay, we, we are adjourned 9 10.